Coming right up, we have Martin Macy, the head of Contextual Decision Intelligence, Quantexa, to share with us on how to operationalize data and automate decision making with decision intelligence. Hi there. My name is Martin Macy, and I'm head of Contextual Decision Intelligence Solutions at Quantexa. We're a 260 person, four year old scale up. Our leading edge data integration and decisioning platform is used by thousands of users in over 70 countries by customers such as HSBC, Standard Chartered, the, the Hartford and so on. I'm here today to talk about how context can be used to automate and augment decisions. In today's uncertain world, companies need to be world class at their key business processes. Analytics and AI are often seen as key to that, and enterprises are investing heavily. But the results from, from some recent research from IDC are eye-catching. IDC class 5% of analytics adopters as high-performing, and these organisations are seeing real and measurable results. But four times as many aren't seeing a return on their investment. The vast majority of the high performers see real time automated decisions as de delivering high business value, but even in this group, less than half have achieved it. Only 15% of organisations overall are making progress with automated decisions. So what are some of the reasons for these problems? IDC found that around 60% of organizations pointed to the lack of data integration and a single version of the truth as a major challenge. Traditional single view solutions are straining at the seams and don't work at data lake scale. Some have tried to integrate data using custom coded approaches, but in retrospect, almost universally regard that as a bad decision. With so many pro problems integrating data from within the enterprise, it's perhaps not surprising that organizations don't try to leverage valuable data from outside. Even in the high performing group, less than 40% are currently using significant external data. But data isn't the only problem. On the modeling side, there has been a choice of using traditional rules-based approaches or adopting newer AI and machine learning techniques. But there's often a lack of known outcomes to train models and vast amounts of effort are being put in to achieve diminishingly small uplifts in model performance. That performance is often disappointing when compared to existing staff who can work around data quality issues, look up external data and look at the bigger picture. And particularly if models are opaque, it can be very difficult to efficiently manage the handoffs between automated decisions and operational teams. The result is that people don't trust the data and they don't trust the models, so they can't automate decisions. And at Quantexa, we call this the data decision gap. Our approach to tackling these major roadblocks is called contextual decision intelligence. Context assembles the data that's needed as the input to a decision. Decision intelligence is an emerging framework for managing decision models throughout their life cycle. There are two stages to creating context, entity resolution and network generation. The first one closes the gap between real world entities and digital entities. It takes multiple disparate data points and produces a single view of a real life entity. Entities can be anything real world referenced in the data. And that could be people, places, organizations, vehicles, phone numbers. It doesn't need explicit linking keys but instead considers many potential ways of identifying an entity from normal data fields. Entity resolution might at first sound a lot like traditional matching technology. The difference is that traditional matching works on a record to record basis, and it struggles in particular to resolve records that are missing attributes and where matches are more ambiguous. Entity resolution instead builds entities out of multiple records using potential identifiers in all of them to improve resolution quality. It effectively learns from the totality of the data to get better results. By resolving the entities and their links to records, you build an enormous link graph. A is linked to B through this record, then B to C and D and so on. Many decisions work best when they take account of real world networks, be they businesses, families, trading groups, or organized crime gangs. 
However, because everyone is linked to everyone at six degrees, the graph is not useful in, for analytics in its raw form. To make a decision, whether it's fully automated or assisting, assisting a human, you need to find the relevant piece of the network. And that means sifting through potentially billions of links to work out which are strong or weak and which are relevant for a particular analytical purpose. Often the network will be based around a customer, be that a business or individual, but it might be an address staff member, if you're looking at inside a fraud vehicle or something else completely. Entities and networks usually dramatically involve, improve analytical model accuracy, while well, those models are based on traditional approaches or machine learning. Models are only as good as the data that they have access to, and context give them, gives them access to all of the information about a real life entity, its direct and indirect connections, and all of their behaviour. Without it, it's a bit like trying to decide whether to buy a house just by peering through the letterbox. Decision intelligence is a term coined by Gartner, which bring, aims to bring together. Um, I'm very sorry, I've lost my computer for a moment. It aims to bring together data and models in the right place at the right time. It's the evolution of business intelligence capable of making decisions as well as informing them. It's an iterative framework for managing the entire process of creating and using decision models. It brings together multiple traditional and emerging decision making dis disciplines. In particular, it places a heavy emphasis on operationalizing decision models in the widest business sense, as well as the technical one. Exceptions need to be robustly handled and outcomes monitored and fed back. Decision intelligence is agnostic to modelling techniques and accommodates a spectrum from machine learning to statistical and scenario-based approaches, but it does emphasise the benefits of transparency and explainability to build trust with the business, customers and wider stakeholders, such as regulators. So contextual decision intelligence brings together context with decision intelligence. And this begins right at the start of the iterative process. Using entity resolution, information from high value internal and external data sources is joined together to create a single analytical view. Experts explore and visualize this linked data. They can start to understand the scope of the knowledge graph networks that might be useful to a particular decision and the criteria that determine relevant links. Perhaps for a given fictional decision about a company, you might only be interested in significant shareholders, companies linked to by shared directors, employees with a particular adverse indicator, and everything one step further out from all of those. Data scientists can then work with the experts to automatically generate these networks across all companies and create models with features and scores at the record, entity, or network levels. These can include machine learning or statistical approaches, but often capture simpler descriptive scenarios too. Because they build on rich contextual data rather than a fragmented incomplete view, even quite simple scenarios can often be combined into very accurate, highly transparent models. Once a model is deployed into an operational environment, decisions can be made in seconds, consistently, transparently, without bias, 24-7, 365 days a year. In many cases, a decision can be made completely automatically, uh, and that's often in excess of 90% of the time, depending on the use case. Where the model is not certain, the decision can be referred to a member of staff. With the right integration between the model and the user interface, all of the important information can be highlighted with plain English explanations, enabling quick and accurate decisions. That user interface might be an operational system they are familiar with using, such as a CRM or case management, or one focused towards experienced analysts. But the important thing is that the context is carried across seamlessly and presented in a way that can be best assimilated by the decision maker. Ultimately, decision processes need three things. Firstly, increased coverage. And this means you miss less risk or less opportunity. Secondly, increased effectiveness. And this means that you are generating fewer false positives 
whether these are opportunity or risk, because these can waste a lot of time or if they're automated, result in a poor business outcome. And finally, increased efficiency. When there is a human in the loop, this means reducing the time to make a decision. Taking a contextual decision intelligence approach, approach helps with all three of those. Context uplifts coverage and effectiveness dramatically. Model transparency and integration with decisioning user interfaces increases efficiency. Contextual decision intelligence has broad applicability across many domains, from spotting new pro prospects to upselling existing customers, understanding staff conduct, financial crime, fraud detection, and predicted credit, credit risk. So that's contextual decision intelligence as an approach. I'd like to talk about some of the practical concerns when adopting it, particularly at enterprise scale, and share how we've addressed them in the platform we created. The first is entity resolution quality, which is the bedrock for context. Any platform needs to consider accuracy in the hardest cases, and those are often in fraud and financial crime detection. That means being able to handle criminals who manipulate details and provide minimal information. But the interesting thing is that intentional manipulation very much overlaps with normal poor data quality in the way that it surfaces, and that's as sparse, inaccurate data. Having built our capability for financial crime first, we've found that if you can handle manipulated data, you can naturally handle poor quality data. And clever core entity resolution algorithms are really critical, but they aren't enough on their own. Also key are high quality parsers, cleansers, and entity resolution models that are pre-trained on global data and distilled into country by country configurations. These need to be fully transparent and explainable as the basis for any transparent and explainable decision. Resolving internal data against sources such as Dun & Bradstreet and Bureau Van Dyke to enrich networks of companies and related individuals is very valuable in financial crime detection, but also for customer intelligence and master data management. For agility, it's important to be able to onboard both internal and external data quickly. We built our platform without a fixed data schema, which avoids a lot of costly ETL work. Entity resolution accuracy varies widely between implementations, even in even best of class ones. For example, a major data supplier put contexts a head to head against three other vendors and an internal build to resolve individuals in their global data set. They had a really high quality ground truth data set, which they used for a rigorous test and contexts that achieved the top match accuracy of 99%, with other candidates range, ranging from 35% upwards. 35% accuracy means an awful lot of missed context. It's important to consider the needs of both operational and data science environments. Usually the former requires on-demand processing optimised for latency, but what data scientists generally want is a very high throughput batch for backtesting whilst optimising models. We have, and we think it's unique, built our platform to support both with common configuration and customization across the two. So a batch environment resolves every single entity in your data and every network, and then you build decision models on top of that. And scaling this type of processing, especially when bringing in large external data sources is challenging. Our batch process runs in Spark in a data lake or in the cloud. And in one test, it processed 1.7 billion core records and almost 7 billion transactions in just under six hours. For comparison, the incumbent market leading technology took about three weeks. As well as absolute throughputs, check for linear scalability as data volumes can build quickly as new sources are onboarded. So our largest instance has around 50 billion records, for example. Apologies for that break. For on-demand environments, there are two fundamental approaches, basic real-time and dynamic. 
The first takes a flow of data updates and creates updates, splits or merges entities in near real time, then assesses impacts on the networks and scores. This is technically simpler, but can leak sensitive information into entities and bakes in a single resolution strictness. And that makes it difficult to onboard sensitive data sources and impossible to support different use cases. So even within FinCrime, fraud is a risk-based decision and AML regulatory. So you may need a different resolution approach for each. Contexa takes a dynamic approach, resolving entities on the fly at request time and creating fundamentally different entities and networks that reflect user and use case access rights and resolution requirements. A true platform serving multiple groups and within an enterprise and multiple use cases needs to take a dynamic approach. And that allows data to be loaded once rather than into silos for each problem. Building and operationalizing contextual features, scenarios, and models can be challenging for data science, and in particular, managing the relationships between data, record, entity, and network level scores, and referrals to users generated from them. We've created a focused advanced analytics framework to assist with this. Finally, an effective user interface is critical for a decision efficiency. The above is one example. It's a user interface designed for advanced analysts. And what it does is it exposes contextual decisioning in its raw form. It's showing, uh, it's using our analytics framework to dynamically show flags and scores in the network context, rerunning analytics automatically as data changes or is brought into scope of an investigation. Um, however, the bulk of users will never see anything as complex as this. Most will see descriptive information, links and scores embedded within the normal systems that they use day to day. So how effective can contextual decision intelligence be? Uh, let's look at three quite different scenarios. I may not be able to cover the third. In the first FX money laundering scenario, a customer's existing transaction monitoring system was generating almost 2,000 alerts per month. Of those, all were false positives. A contextual model reduced the number of alerts by two orders of magnitude. Reducing the false positives by that much might raise an obvious question of whether it's missing lots of risk. Leaving aside that the old model didn't actually find anything, that wasn't the case. Six investigations progressed to level three. We increased, increased effectiveness by a factor of 100 uh, while increasing coverage. And those alerts were much more efficiently handled as they were presented in the right way to, for investigators to review. In the second intelligence, customer intelligence scenario, networks were used to identify prospects much more quickly than previously possible. Networks were built around companies to identify prospects that could be reached through referral by joining customer data to external Dun & Bradstreet data using entity resolution. These connections might be via board memberships, smaller in investor relationships, and so on. They were rated for opportunity and on how easy they are to reach, negative traits, and so on. A set of ranked opportunities was created for each relationship manager in the CRM system, and based on a trial phase, expected benefits are projected to reach 200 million when rolled out to all relationship managers. The third example is looking at train ticket delay claim fraud. So a contextual model was able to make over 90% of claim decisions completely automatically. Claims were banded with the lowest risk bands paid out without any further intervention. Similarly, the highest risk band, representing clearly impossible journeys and so on, was simply refused. The remaining were referred for investigation with complex behaviour such as unusual but not completely implausible travel patterns. Context was used extensively to analyse behaviour and occupancy related to addresses, website account abuse, bank account links and various other factors, complementing more efficient, uh, more traditional velocity based measures. The automated system found slightly increased fraud coverage whilst covering much of the work of a 60 person team. So I hope this lightning tour, tour uh, has provided a flavour of how to integrate data and make automated decisions in a transparent and explainable way, how to use relationships to uncover hidden opportunities or risk, and how to integrate automated and human decision making. 
Unfortunately, we don't have time now for questions, but if you feel uh, that contextual decision intelligence might allow your organization to derive more value from your data, please do get in touch at Context as a virtual booth or with me on the email above, and I'd be delighted to continue the conversation. There are also a variety of materials available for download at our booth. I'd like to thank SFF for the chance to speak, and of course, all of you for your time. It's been a pleasure.